Hello all, my name is Olivia Brock and today I will be presenting my capstone project titled Monitoring and Comparing Start and End of Growing Seasons Within the Great Smoky Mountains in Response to Climate Change. My project is in partnership with the National Park Service and the Adopt-A-Plot Phenology Team as part of the National Phenology Association. The ultimate deliverable of my project will be an informational pamphlet that will be discussed later on in the presentation. I'll start by discussing carbon sinks. The Great Smoky Mountains National Park is part of the North American carbon sink. Carbon sinks are locations where more carbon is absorbed than is emitted back into the atmosphere. The goal of this project is to understand how climate change impacts these carbon sinks. Terrestrial ecosystems absorb 15 to 30 percent of anthropogenic carbon dioxide emissions, and global forests overall absorb 2.4 billion tons of carbon dioxide. Just looking at these two figures right here, it is quite obvious that forests as carbon sinks are crucial in combating climate change. However, a lack of understanding and preserving of these forests as well as their response to climate change has led to some potential shifts in these values. Forests cover 30% of the land surface. As you can see, this data was taken in 2008, so this figure is subject to change. And that 45% of terrestrial carbon is absorbed by forests. Again, that number is subject to change. Boreal forests, such as the Great Smoky Mountains, store their carbon in soil, meaning it is more secured and it can be used by other organisms that live in the soil, as well as creating a pristine living environment for many of the native species outside of what's happening in regards to climate change. There's also the annual carbon flux, which is the amount of carbon that is subject to these forests for sequestration, sequestration, as well as you can see that this flux has increased by 30 to 50 percent since the 1960s. The car impacts to carbon sinks as a relation to climate change, meaning increased temperatures, has a couple of impacts. So firstly is that early spring phenology and the carbon cycle starting early. Photosynthesis, as well as the carbon cycle, is crucial in a forest being a productive carbon sink. When photosynthesis and the carbon cycle starts earlier in the year, the sun is not in its maximum position as it would be in the warmer, later spring and summer months. Therefore, photosynthesis and the carbon cycle is not at maximum productivity and car not carbon is not being absorbed from the atmosphere at a higher rate because trees aren't photosynthesizing as rapidly as they would, as well as increased temperatures impacting the phenological plasticity for abscission. Abscission is when leaves die and fall during the fall. And when photosynthesis is occurring earlier in the year, but then progressing later into the year as those warmer months prevail, Plasticity and abscission is pushed further back into the year, and leaves falling to the ground via abscission is important for biomass, going back to carbon being in the soil for the absorption of carbon in these carbon sinks, as well as the end of growing season vegetation during growing cycle, how the impacts of later abscission can impact the vegetation growth and earlier start of season growth. Liu et al created a project using NDIV or the Normalized Difference Vegetation Index which is satellite and graphical indicator that uses remote sensing measurements that assess if there is live green vegetation in the area and what percent of the area is covered in live green vegetation. So say you were to look at a map of the U.S. you would see 
On the west coast, it's more desert versus the east coast, which is more green. However, green later in the year shows a delay in end of season growth and researchers in this research project found that there is a 70% delay of end of season growth within the northern hemisphere with 43% of that being statistically significant. With all that background information on the importance of carbon sinks, I will now begin to discuss what my specific project's research will be comprised of. My research will be within the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, which is um, part of the U.S. Park Service as well as the U.S. Department of Interior. The Great Smoky Mountains National Park runs across the Tennessee and North Carolina border. It is the largest Class I wilderness area in the eastern U.S., as I stated earlier, it is also a temporal boreal biome, and the national, the Great Smoky Mountains National Park was chosen for two reasons. One, that is where my partners were located, as well as its large size and vast amount of native species and plots makes it a great observation point. And again, going back to that largest class one wilderness in the eastern U.S. as a main carbon sink for the area. There will be five native tree species that will be observed for this project that were chosen via the National Park Service. Those include the yellow birch, the yellow buckeye, the sugar maple, the American beech, and the Carolina silverbell. So I'm going to start with my plot. There are 22 plots overall and volunteers are dispersed. 300 volunteers are dispersed among those plots. Personally, I have five other volunteers that work with me on my plot. My plot is the Newfound Gap. So this is the visitor center. As you can see, this is a monument that's really popular area. That's where a lot of people notice that this is Newfound Gap. And the trail that I walk through, if you come past this monument, it's down in this deep forested area. Right here is where the trail is. There's a lot of mountainous and slope areas. so getting to this trail is easy it's a more easy trail as compared to others and this is where i will be collecting my data from the plot collection data spots will vary depending on location however for my research personally i will be in newfound gap so as stated the volunteers will be assigned to various plots each plot will each volunteer will get a notebook and in that notebook Firstly will be the phenology plot. So this is mine for Newfound Gap. As you can see, there's numbers listed on the side that correspond with tree tags for species. It will say the name of the species and show where your trail starts and where your trail ends. While walking the trails, volunteers can look at images within the books that show this is what the tree looks like, this is what it's located, here are some defining features such as a hump or how thin it is and then individuals can record that those are the trees they're getting collecting data from. There's also a page for each tree that shows its leaves, what its twigs, fall leaf color, flowers to make it easily identifiable throughout the year. Data collected can be can be collected in two ways. First of which is through Nature's Notebook, which is an app. And then the second of which is through a plot data sheet. I am unaware of anybody using a plot data sheet. No one in my plot is. We primarily use Nature's Notebook, which is an app that is run through the National Phenology Association. And as you can see, this is a screenshot. So you individuals, volunteers will have a seminar that will help get them set up on this app. Once you get to the plot that you are located in, you can it will automatically pull up these trees in order, just like on this map. You look and mark and make sure it's the right tree, and then you can look and you see these pheno stages that will be recorded. This is a brief overview. So as you can see, this is in May of 2019. There was no young leaves, no leaves at all, colored leaves. It goes all the way down to abscission breaking more in depth. And so once all this is recorded, this data can be saved. You move on to the next and individuals can record their data very rapidly. You can also include what the weather and temperature were like as well.
and why, what is the importance of collecting this data from these volunteers and these plots? So the first is to understand the shift between dormancy and active stages. Active stages is when the carbon sink will be at its best. It will be absorbing the most amount of carbon, and that is due to photosynthesizing and the carbon cycle versus dormancy in late fall, winter, where there is not as much carbon being absorbed. However, there is biomass in the soil. So understanding that shift, how long that gap is, and the importance of the biomass within that gap between the dormancy, but understanding how earlier start of growing seasons can impact that shift in that narrow window between dormancy and once again active using that NDIV. Next is understanding fitness as a favorable condition. So going back to Darwinism, survival of the fittest, the ability to survive and reproduce. So the tree species that are observed and this will be discussed more in the conclusions, has a wide variety of impacts on ecological services and species that survive on certain species as fitness and how understanding climate change impacts on the fitness of certain tree species and how it can stunt their growth or their canopy size in relation to climate change is data that can also be collected. Also, understanding the neglection for the end of season growth and nutrient cycles. Again, biomass from abscission is important in the carbon cycle as well as boreal forest storing carbon in soil. Therefore, a more rapid understanding of how the end of growing season being pushed back later in the year impacts nutrient cycles and the carbon cycle for when start of season growth. Next and last is, again, the NDVI, the Normalized Difference Vegetation Index, and photosynthetic periods. When are plants photosynthesizing at maximum capacity versus when they're starting earlier in the year and photosynthesis, photosynthesis will not necessarily be at its peak and how that pushes back that end of growing season, which, again, can ultimately impact start of growing season and the ability for carbon capture. Again, the deliverable will be an informational pamphlet. There's two main reasons for this pamphlet. The first is to spread awareness to the public. We often hear individuals say the leaves seem to be changing later in the year. Spring seems to be starting earlier in the year and it's just a basis of to start to spread that awareness of the public of climate change impacts as well as to kickstart personal research so individuals can be like huh this seems interesting I've never really heard about this I'm going to go home and do my own research and again to spread that knowledge and awareness throughout the park service as these pamphlets will be in ranger stations visitor centers in downtown Gatlinburg areas where people are likely to see grab and engage the pamphlet sections are not fully set in stone I'm still meeting with my partner over that but overall it will be discussing the importance of carbon sinks as discussed earlier in this project, climate change impacts on growing seasons, impacts to ecosystem services such as the fitness that I had discussed on the other slide here, fitness is a favorable condition, as well as including ways to reduce personal carbon footprints, including unplugging devices, as, um, you know, driving less, situations like that. Lastly is the impacts or the conclusions. So impacts of climate change are largely unknown. Carbon sinks are the natural defense. Therefore, understanding the impacts of climate change via climate projection models through carbon sinks is important in understanding where these thresholds are. It is understood that humans have surpassed that 350 part per million, but scientists are still actively creating these climate projection models that will be necessary in understanding what the future impacts of climate change could be and helping to turn the unknown into at least understood, as well as the option to increase productivity of forests. So Carrie at all discussed planting seedlings and increasing seedling capacity especially in older forests to increase the carbon sequestration and the 
strength of these carbon sinks in these areas. And here is my literature cited. Thank you so much for watching.